Yes. I wonder if we can speak to someone positive from the cabal, from the secret um, conspiracy, maybe from the present or from the, you know, maybe they, they already in the spirit for somebody who could explain something about the cabal. Oh, okay. There is global conspiracy. We would like to know more about it. The cabal, I guess, is very intricate. Yep. Maybe someone uh, positive can speak from them because they also have positive agenda as well. So. Yes, there is a positive. I, no negative person will be able to come in. I won't let them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can see if there's some somebody positive that mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any positive people in the cabal, but there has to be, shouldn't there? One moment, please, while we adjust. Thank you. I cannot use my normal voice because I do not want to be identified. Sure. I am not going to go into too much detail unless you ask for them. Uh-huh. I will use more generalities, but I will explain to you some things that are happening. Okay. The cabal, yes. as it stands at this time, mm -hmm. is a very unified group of people. Of course, there are divisions. Some people have responsibilities that others do not. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you? I'm sure it does. Yes. There is a group of the cabal working in Antarctica. Okay. And their job is with the time, time manipulation portion. Okay. They must keep track of what happens a day ahead of, of now. All right. Being that they do not go weeks and months ahead in time, but they go days, a day or so ahead, mm -hmm. so that they can keep track of future news. And if something is to their disliking, they can change it if they wish. Yes. Now, as you know, the cabal is a group of very wealthy people there are some that are not so wealthy in the cabal, and let me explain why. They are figureheads. They are paid quite well, but they are not from the wealthiest group of people. They are from outside that group, but were um, called to be used by the cabal for strategic reasons. Now, it is not well known who all the cabal is because it is not every single wealthy person, but many of the wealthiest of the world are there. Some do not identify themselves as cabal, mm -hmm. but they do identify themselves as a supporter of some of their actions. Uh -huh. So they may not be directly involved, but they will give their funds toward some of the ideas that are uh, put out by the cabal leaders. Okay. So this is what happens. And they let all the wealthiest people in the world know what they're doing if they can trust them. And when they get in touch with these people, they then um, respond by get, sending money or a response to them in a secret cryptic way. Now, if they send money, this is already saying that they approve of the actions that are going to take place. Now, some have pulled away from the cabal because 
they said they were going to do certain actions and the actions that were done were not exactly what the person or people thought that it was going to be and so they are pulled away and are distrusting of the cabal but still are in contact with them do you understand this uh-huh uh, how do you uh, how do do the cabal people call each other is there a name for that you mean for no they are just they are just business people and they know who they are by this the cryptic language that is used when when meeting so when you talk about cabal how, what word would you use about it maybe several words uh you might use amalgamation you might use corporation you might use incorporation you might use federation there are different groups of cabal that call themselves different things okay and like i said they're unified but sectioned uh -huh. and so once they have had a meeting and not everyone is at every meeting of course there are too many of them but uh -huh. the information from that meeting is sent all around to different corporations by way of memo thought uh -huh. process the memo thought process mm -hmm. uh emails mm -hmm. and they find that there are video messages but they are not sent directly to them they must find them in the cryptic language that's sent in the email uh-huh uh-huh uh, how many people are uh, on the top of the cabal like hundreds thousands no. i would say there are 50. uh-huh and um how, how many sections are there there are at least 40. uh-huh but probably even more than that but you see the sections are to keep an eye on all the different leadership positions around the world. So what is the size of an average section? About, well, that depends on how important it is and how high up it is. So each section can be different sized. Say the one which is responsible for time control. Oh, the time control people are about 125. And the ones who are responsible for finances. Oh, that is the largest of the group. That would be about 220. Uh-huh. And uh, the ones which is responsible for aliens. That is only about 60 and the one which is responsible for spirituality spirituality in which sense uh, that was my next question in which sense uh, the cabal is united spiritually they are united spiritually and they have spiritual leaders and they are a spiritual leader is involved in each one of the sections uh -huh. and so that would be something that uh, would be about 40 or 50 that they would meet um, separately because they are representing their uh, section of the cabal in and in the spiritual sense and they mm -hmm. um, unification that way mm -hmm. uh, is it related is the spirituality of the cabal related to catholic church parts of it uh-huh it's related to all religions all right uh so what's the what's the idea behind it what part of uh spiritual vibration is united cabal they want to make sure that everybody's on the same page when it comes to what they believe is happening and mm -hmm. they try to put a very positive spin on what is what they believe is happening they do not call it the ascension they are not for the ascension they mm -hmm. are for maintaining the status quo 
This means that their belief system is fear-based and mm -hmm. that it is manipulative. Uh-huh. So uh, how much of uh, Satanism is that? How much of what? Satanism. Uh, I, Satan, I, Satan, Sat, Sat, Satanism. Um, oh, Satanism. Yeah. Well, there is some of that, but I don't know exactly how much. Uh, how much of Luciferian culture? Is it the same? We, yes, there's different. You see, I don't know all the different um, religions. I know that they can include almost all of the different belief systems but they bring them all together in a one thought process um, way. Uh-huh. So, uh, in, a, uh, in a way that is positive, but yet still fear-based. Oh, is it positive? I see. So, um, <clears throat> is there direct communication with the spirits in, um, in the Kabbalah? I suppose there is, but I am not at the Spiritual Leaders Conference. Theirs is one of a very different kind of meeting. The other meetings are more like business meetings. I would imagine their meetings are more like uh, the meetings of cardinals or uh, bishops. I see. <laughs> What's the ratio um, uh, composition of the of the cabal? The what? Racial composition, racial percentages. Oh, I would say that it is about only thirty-two percent white. Oh wow! Uh -huh. It's uh, about twenty percent black. Uh, there is a twenty-eight percent. Um, uh, Indo Indonesian or Asian or, or I do not want to be incorrect uh, uh, socially incorrect but there are uh, Chinese and Japanese and uh, Koreans and things of this nature would take about a 28 to 30 percent also uh-huh so and then filter the rest through with uh -huh. every other kinds so it's a bit disproportional to number of people. Is it proportional to number of rich people? No, they're all wealthy. I mean, it is what I was saying. It is not proportional to the population of Earth. No, it's not. Think... No, it doesn't work with the, the proportion. It were, it works with the power ratios. But uh, I'm surprised of high percentage of black people. They don't have much power. Yes, in some places they do. Not yes. here. Oh, where? They do in Iraq, Iran, um, the Middle Eastern area, in uh, the powers that be in Africa, the powers mm -hmm. that be in um, some of the very uh, smaller cultures in the islands of the world. But there are some very wealthy areas there. I see. I see. So you, you, you just clumped together the Arabs and, and African blacks, which is... Of course. To me, oh, a little separate. Okay. Differentiate black from black. I see. I see. All right. Black from brown, I should say. Yeah. Uh-huh. I see. That's all right. So how much of alien influence is there? About... Um, there is some alien influence, especially with the time travel area in Antarctica. Also in uh, a few different of the sections, like um, economic control, there is some alien influence there. Some production, uh, there's some alien influence there. And I would say all in all, there is about a 10% or a little less than 10% um, alien uh, influence, probably around 8%. Um, who, is, uh, who has more power, the, the aliens or the um, runaway human civilization, which is outside of the Earth, on the Cabal? 
The aliens have more control because they're more organized. I see. So how much of the presence of uh, humans from outside of the Earth is there? Only about 2 to 3 percent. Uh-huh. Uh, so which of the aliens have more power uh, on the cabal, more influence on the cabal? It's hard to say. They disguise themselves, and so you don't know what species you're really speaking to, and they don't really present themselves as the species that they are. They present themselves as businessmen or people of business. They do not so they represent are... themselves as aliens because they do not want to be looked at um, in a different way than the people around them in some senses. But we know that they are there and we know who they are. So it's hidden aliens. So Kabbalah is hidden and within Kabbalah is hidden alien infiltration, which is crazy. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> All right. What is your views on the... Um, on, on the war, are we coming to some sort of escalation of some wars? Are there any plans? The you can would publish? wish that to happen. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? Your kind of yes. So, would it be a big, small? Would, a war would help keep things at a more status quo uh, thought process for them. It would increase uh, monetary values as far as creating more weapons, uh, using more production, and uh, putting more people to work, it would be very beneficial for the cabal to have war. And it is a very profitable um, solution to many things. And plus it keeps your mind off of the ascension and takes your mind off of positive things. War is very negative and also very fear-driven, and that's another thing that they would also uh, revel in. They would continue to put, push the fear factors and the, uh, the unpleasantness of a war on the earth so that it would keep down the number of uh, people that would be thinking about ascension, positivity, and things of that nature. Uh, can you elaborate on the ideas, um, which kind of war would it be? Is it like more like Vietnam War or something like that? Yes, it would be bombs, explosions, and things of that nature, yes. So more like traditional without nuclear explosions. Just... They would want that, yes. They would want that? Yes. Is it in plans? No. But um, the mm. thing is, they would want terrorist activity because that's a very fearful thing and they would want to exploit that thought process to keep people in control, keep people away from large crowds, keep, keep people in their homes so they would know exactly where their people, where people are and they would exploit war because that's also fear driven and also, but it's also very financially Ex, uh, ex, uh, a good. Uh, you, they are. Uh, they man manufacture more weapons. They manufacture more uh, bombs and and tanks and things of this nature. Put more people to work. The uh, economy rises. And but still, they have that fear in the background, and they still have the negativity of that ma manipulation going for them and also gaining in money and surplus. So in the Ukrainian conflict, how much of the cabal was, uh, influence of the cabal was there? Um, about 50%. Uh-huh. Uh, what kind of influence was it? What kind of influence? Yes. It was that, uh, it was possession influence. They wanted, uh, to own the land. They, the more land they own, the more that they can uh, control. Uh, what methods did they use? They used uh, manipulation and persuasion. They used bribery. They used um, 
uh, different kinds of um, exploit uh, exploitive ways to uh, prop, uh, propagandize the people. Uh, so it sounds like traditional methods. Did they use some modern technologies for that? They didn't need to. If they if they thought that it was necessary, they would. However, with the the intelligence and the understanding from those people, it was not necessary to manipulate them by spending a lot of money. So they did it as inexpensively as possible. So I'm just thinking about um, using some sort of um, mind control. Yeah, mind control thing. Probably yeah. Uh, did, mind control over the area of the population, yes. They really didn't need to. The people were persuaded rather easily. Uh-huh. Uh, so what technologies, uh, what technology does Cabal use? Uh, what is the futuristic? So time, con time, time manipulation is, is one of them. What else? Yes, they do use mind manipulation as well, like you said, in certain areas, mostly large cities. They do that with larger populations, the ones that are more intelligent and think for themselves more independent, they have to use mind control on those kinds of people. Whereas people in places like the Ukraine and Siberia are already followers and not great leaders, and so they will blindly follow as, as they are led. But there, there are more intellectuals in the larger cities and the, the greater, inter, uh, greater uh, mm, educated areas, and they have to use more mind control and uh, subliminal use of uh, that in those areas. How does it work? It works through television, radio, and sometimes music. Uh, is there like um, overall invisible wave sent over the city? Yes, but this, that doesn't work quite as well. Let me tell you why. There's already so many wavelengths going over the city. There's there's microwaves, there's the cellular phone waves, there's the electromagnetic fields and all these things. Sending the, it through airwaves some, can sometimes agitate the population rather than control them. So they oh. rather do their manipulation where it's more influential. So they don't want agitation, I see. Not really. They want, they want people to follow, but they don't want them to be agitated. This is not a control. You see, if people are agitated, they're harder to control. I see. So how much of uh, total, uh, um, how do you call it, total um, espionage, no, what's that word? Um, how much everyone is traced, like uh, on the earth, like, uh, is it really used so do you, they trace every person and manipulate every person through a computer or is it not used yet? They do trace about 80% of the population. Uh -huh. The reason for that, there are some parts of the population that do not need trace because they don't have electronic equipment available to them or they just don't know how to, to properly use it to be affluent with it. And so therefore, they trace, I think the, it's actually about 78% of the population that they do keep some kind of tabs on, not 24 hours a day, but they do have people checking on different ways. And they use things like Google and Facebook and those kinds of things to uh, reference uh, their uh, information. But that, um, you know, the, just knowing where people are is not sufficient to manipulate them. So how would they use that actually? They use more than that. There's more information available once you can get someone's Facebook account or Google account 
or there are other accounts, of course, they use several different, and then they, uh, they uh, dig down into those accounts and find out several other things about them, and like their religious uh, affiliations and things of that nature, because they can look at certain forms that are available to the public that they have filled out, and uh, they are, uh, they will know who they need to look at more closely. But my question is not how they know things, but what do they do with that? Like, how can you manipulate people at large scale using that information? That would be pretty difficult. Oh, they don't use, that's not used for manipulation. Uh, that, the manipulation is through television, through airwaves, uh, radio, music, things of that nature. The, the reason for the looking at the information on paper is to find out who they should manipulate not I that see. that is the manipulation itself. I see. I see. So um, what technologies are available to the cabal in terms of uh, medical technologies? Do they live longer? Do they um, have telepathy? There are telepathy. There are some that live longer because they are affluent enough to be able to purchase that kind of technology. It's not cheap. So what, uh, what kind of ages are there? What kind of what ages? Yeah, uh, people ages. What's their... They keep home? that to themselves. I am not an, in access of the personal files of the highest ranking of the cabal. They keep their information very private and it is not given out to the public and I would not be able to know that information. Yeah, would you be surprised to find people who lived uh, 300 years? I would be su not be surprised to know that people are living over 100 years very easily, but they did not have the cabal as powerfully as it is now 300 years ago, oh. or even 200. But within the I last see. 100 years, it has become very, very powerful. I'm reading the history of uh, Lyndon Johnson and now I'm at the year uh, 68 and obviously the main two questions are uh, who killed uh, John, uh, JFK and uh, Robert Kennedy. Can you help with that? Well, they were all, that was all cabal, uh -huh. but it was so finely manipulated that you would never be able to trace it to them. So uh, Linda Johnson wasn't involved? No. Mm -hmm. They liked him. He was greedy. They liked greedy people. So Cabal liked him and they preferred him to take power because he was greedy. Yes, and they could manipulate greedy people with money. <laughs> uh-huh. Thank you, I understand. Yes, it's very simple. There is no great a mystery about greedy people. So, is there any uh, manipulation? Uh, no, sorry, sorry, wrong word. Uh, is there any communication, um, like super futuristic communication be between cabal members? You said there is like telepathic messages or something like. Uh, there is. There is higher technology between the higher groups. The higher sections uh -huh. of the cabal use higher technology to communicate with one another because they're above anything that can be detected by the army, the militaries, or the governments. And so they can communicate one to another easily without uh, being noticed by any of Earth's higher... Um, military uh except for uh the only the only group that can detect what they're doing is the secret science the secret space uh program i understand they don't even care about that they're so, mm -hmm. they're so far advanced than even the cabal and their interests are very different than the cabal that they don't care so what's the relationship between those two programs what What's the relationship between Secret Space Program and the Cabal? Very little. There is some when they need to work together, they do. 
Uh, the secret space program did help with the time machine construct, mm -hmm. but it did not, um, it does not run it. They were, they got their money and left. So they have independent um, finances. The secret space program is so far advanced, you would not even believe it. And they have their own funding and they, they are actually trading with extraterrestrials information um, because their information has grown so much because of interaction with different species that they are one of the great uh, traders in the so uh, this part of the solar system, this part of the galaxy actually, uh, because mm -hmm. they have information that is wanted by people from several galaxies away. And would uh -huh. they tell you that? No. Even some of the federations that are around the Earth want to work with the secret space program because they are powerful and they would like to gain some of their secrets. I understand now. Uh, I still don't like the word cabal. It's, it's a weird word. It has a negative connotation and it's just kind of, so you don't have any other substitute for that word. They See, don't call a, themselves that. They right. are noted as it. They have a symbol for who they are, but they do not name the symbol. It is mm -hmm. just on all the paperwork or all the, all the trans actions or transmissions. Mm -hmm. There's a small symbol on it that, that denotes that that is who they are, but they do not call themselves that. The word is never used. I see. So can you describe a little bit more <coughs> How does the communication system look, the futuristic one which the Cabal uses? Yes, it's encrypted. They are at its very high frequency. It's also um, above any frequency that is being used by the military. So the military does not even connect with it. It is alien technology at its best. Right. Um, how does it physically, what's the interface between the mind and the, and the communication? Is it like you hold it in the hand or how does it look? It, well, it is said and rumored that some of the cabal do have a chip in their head right. that they can communicate with. And mm -hmm. I do not know or have not seen this chip, but it is rumored that it exists between the 50 highest ranking. I see. So you're not a part of 50? No. Uh -huh. If I were part of the 50, I would know much more than I do. But I know enough because I've been with them long enough to learn many things. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so what transportation technologies do they have? Tech, transportation? Yeah. Um, well, they do have, let me explain something. Mm -hmm. They do have the underground uh, saucer entries that they are building for their own transportation. These are, there are only a couple of them that are in use at this time, but they are huge underground uh, entrance ways that they come in through the ocean and go several miles inland uh, mm -hmm. from under the ocean. And uh, that's part of their transportation ship uh, set up for the future. Now these are multiple. They're making them all over the world. But the ones that are most, uh, the ones that are most active are the ones in that the unusual places like mm -hmm. the Falkland Islands and uh, New Zealand and places like this. So um, what is normally used now? Uh, do they, can, you, can they fly the solar system? They, there are, it has been stated and rumored that mm -hmm. some of them have left the planet, but mostly they just use regular transportation it as flights and different things. If there is an emergency, mm -hmm. they do know how, how to transport from one place to another. 
but these transport places are rare. There's only about six of them that exist that you could go to six different places. These are uh, places that are high uh, security areas and they can transport uh, themselves to there if necessary. And there is only a few of them with this high of a clearance. I see. Um, so what there, is is a, there are a few military people that do work with the cabal. Uh -huh. And that is some of the reason for that. They have approved it, but not even the military knows where these secret uh, portals are and how they actually can uh, get into some of the high security areas that they do but it is because they are working with some high military people. I understand. Uh, thank you, that helps. Uh, I understand, yeah, Kabbalah is pretty mm, behind, I guess, secret space program, and they're pretty behind the aliens. They're more like tied to the humanity than to the, well, to the they, future. Yes and no. They are, they, you see, they're older humans. A lot of them are older humans and change is not something that is easy for older humans. Some of them have adapted to these changes and are able to move forward in, in going the more modern ways. But there are some that are stuck in the old philosophies and will not change or change very little. Yeah, it's hard to understand them. I kind of really never followed the rich people, so I, I guess, you know, I when you, when a, he's not when one you of are, but you go ahead. But when you are loose, used to having life a certain way, and a life is good for you, and you enjoy your life, change is not something that is easy for you, mm -hmm. especially if it is something that is more fast paced, if it is something that you have to learn a lot about. So they do not uh, want to have to learn a lot of things. They do not want to have to uh, give a lot of time for these changes. They are living a very good life as it is. But they still have to do a lot of work to keep the earth running, right? Of course. And so that's why they don't want to learn a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. But the society changes fast, does it? Society changes, but they have people underneath them mm. that deal with the changes. They don't have to. I see. I wonder what's their work is then? How do they, uh, what's their work day? What's their work day? Uh-huh. It depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. Some like to work and others don't. And mm -hmm. so when it comes to work, those that are workaholics will take a full day and spend 8, 10, 12 hours or even 16 at the office. Mm -hmm. Those other ones will spend four to six. Right, but what would they do? What's the activity? Well, they check and make sure that everything is working properly. They, what what leaders of that caliber do is make sure that everything around them is running smoothly. So what they do is they check in with the, all their highest ranking officers and they check to make sure that everything that they have reported to them is um, optimal. And then if that is the case, then they move on and to see if they have any new ideas or a check on their stocks, their bonds, their tradings, all these different things, and then call it a day. So it's not much different from business executives, right? No, not really, except they have a, a, some initiatives that are not known to the public or not known to their companies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so um, what's uh, your uh, 
what 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 you look outlook of the economy where does the economy is where is the economy moving where is the economy moving yeah that is hard to say this is a time of great change mm -hmm. i know that with my own stocks and bonds that uh, i know exactly where to go i am not going to tell you what mm -hmm. what things are going to be beneficial and what sure. are not because that would defeat my own wealth and my own security of course but um i say uh, more like long term what what do you see happening to our economy is it falling I, apart sometimes through, right now it is going through some changes and it will continue to go through the the cabal, as it, as it will, wants to stay ahead of the curve. They want to stay ahead of all the things that are happening on the planet. So therefore, they are going to create a greater way of doing things, create a better way, and they are already given suggestions from outside of this world of how they can slowly manipulate the planet into a better economy manipulate the, the economy into a, um, an interesting, changing, and multifaceted thing. So they're already making changes for this. How is it organized? Is it like an initiative group, a committee which works on a futuristic economy? Um, you might say that. It is more than one section of the, of the cabal works on these things because it's more than one section that of the world that will have to change in order for the changes to be effective. You have to work with industry, with foundations, with the economy, with the banking systems, and with trade and all these things have to be worked and subtly changed so that they can succeed with their plans. Right. So, uh, so there's more than one section of the cabal that has to be informed about what is happening and has to actually deal with the changes. They have their own part to play in the change that is happening and they are informed on how to do so in a very exact way. So how much of competition is within the cabal? Competition financially? No, uh, personally. I would say there is some that want to move up to the higher realms of the, the cabal. Mm -hmm. They want to become the leaders. They, they feel that they have the, the, what it takes for these kinds of changes that are coming and that some of the cabal at the very top are getting old and are in the way and not doing a uh, as good of a job as they could do. So yes, there is some competition with that, with people wanting to move up. It is always that way with the good cabal because the cabal is some of the most driven people in the world. Um. How safe is to be in the cabal? Uh, are there like coups and uh, terrorist attacks and are people killed? There has been a couple instances, but only after it was proven that they were a treasonous to the society. To the cabal society? Correct. Uh-huh. So the cabal kept its, um, it wasn't ever turned over, right? So there wasn't um, power taken off from that. It was stable for many years. Yes, it was uh, <laughs> there. As you look at it, it's 96% stable at this time. And it was stable for last 80 years or something? Um, actually, the first... Yes, 80, I would say um, at least 70. The first 30 years were rather difficult, 35. Mm -hmm. Establishing a worldwide mm -hmm. community of this nature was not easy to do. It took a lot of time 
and it took a lot of trust, and it took a lot of convincing. Uh, what was this? Um, how was the World War II? Um, what was the role of the cabal in World War II, and um, how did it affect it? The cabal was in favor of the war and made multiple uh, billions of dollars in creating weapons and putting people to work and uh, creating um, places to sell their products. Mm -hmm. Not only was, were they selling their product to the people that were at war, but they were also selling their product to people who wanted warlike machinery mm -hmm. and guns and, and things of that na nature. So they made a huge fortune uh, in armaments. Um, what was the role of the cabal in the St Stalin's and the early Soviet Union? Um, um, well, they wanted to, they were testing some theories about control and uh, what kind of personalities people follow. They were, the cabal has done many tests over the century and it, it is personalities, leadership uh, thought processes, uh, political testings and things of that nature. I wouldn't so be surprised if they are uh, doing tests with uh, President Trump. Uh-huh. Uh, what, uh, what was the relationship between, what was the relationship bet between the uh, cabal and Stalin? They wanted to see uh, what kind of following his leadership would bring, but also they wanted to, um, uh, control certain areas for, um, mo for uh, monetary reasons, and they wanted to control trade for certain reasons at that time. But was he aware of them? He was aware of them only to a certain point. Did he, did he have uh, an agreement with them? No. Ah, because it seems like he was a... Uh... He was in agreement with something, with somebody or some, some well, sort of force. They manipulated him without an agreement. Mm -hmm. You see, that is the genius of the cabal, is they have the ability to manipulate people without them knowing that they're being manipulated. Um, how about um, modern Russia? What's their um, involvement in modern Russia? Well, the aliens had a great deal of influence with modern Russia and with Putin as he started out and in the mid-periods. They have been since uh, taken out of control and he is back into control. Uh -huh. uh, but there was a very big upheaval between the aliens and the Russians at one point uh, several years ago. So oh. at this point, the aliens are not in control there, but they were in control of Russia for quite a while. And the cabal? And the cabal knew this, and that they did not like that the aliens were in control, so they helped uh, Russia uh, become more free. Uh-huh. Is there some sort of agreement between um, Putin and the cabal? Is he part of the cabal? The cabal, listen carefully, the cabal tries not to make agreements with high-ranking politicians because uh, they can be manipulated if, they, if certain things would happen that were in favor of the politician. So they try not to make agreements with them so they can control them no matter what happens as far as, far as the popularity or the fall of popularity with certain politics, politicians moves forward. So they can actually be in more control without agreements than they can with agreements. At first they did make a couple agreements. They did have a, an agreement with Hitler. That went 
very badly. And so they decided after that not to make agreements with high ranking politicians. Ah. Okay, so what's the, what are the plans of the cabal in Russia right now? I do not know. That is a certain section of the cabal that I am not uh, aligned with right at the moment. But I know that their plans are that they are going to manipulate the Middle East in many ways. I see. Uh, what is the role of uh, Jews in the cabal? Mm. Well, they seem to have a lot of money. And so they are naturally a good member. Mm -hmm. um, at least many of them, because their faith is very weak for the most part. So uh, there is a, obviously like uh, people of the same uh, background usually stick together and help each other. So yes, Asians, exactly. Asians, Jew, Jews help Jews. So uh, is there like um, some sort of cohesive faction of Jews in the cabal? Of course. Um, is there a uh, philosophy in any way connected to Judaism? In some ways, but let me tell you what, how it works. There, is, <clears throat> there are people of all different faiths in all different sections. And so when one section comes to meet with another section, if it's necessary, there will be allies of the same faith within each section. And so they will feel comfortable to speak to each, uh, to that side uh, uh, without too much problem. Uh huh. So what's percent of the Jews in the top of the cabal? Actually, even though the Jewish faith is a very small faith worldwide, only about uh, maybe 6% of the world, it still holds about 3% of the higher hierarchy. Mm, no, Jews can't make 6% of the world. It's much smaller. Um, yeah, but um, I think it's like 30,000, 50,000, something. Or 50, oh, 30 million, 50 million, not more than that. So it's not 6%. But anyway, uh, so 3% of hierarchy. I see. Look it up. Mm -hmm. Yep, I see. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but anyway, yes, there, there are a small percentage of the faith in the world compared mm -hmm. They're not in the top 10 religions, I don't think. No, no, not at all, no. All right, so the question is uh, Russians. Uh, how much are Russians represented in the, in the cabal, top cabal and uh, middle size? Well, you see, I, I do not know exactly, but I would think that it's about 5%. Oh, wow, I see. Um, so if you want to invite you next time, can you give us some keywords so we can address you, invite you again? Yes, um, but you might be interested to know, mm -hmm. hmm, just call us Shires. Shires, okay, thank you. Is there anything else we should discuss? Not at this time. So what's your uh, personal um, outlook on Ascension? I'm actually um, leaning toward it in some ways because I see that the cabal has, is growing weak in, in some areas. Some of the sections of cabal are not strong like they were 20 years ago. They mm -hmm. are actually deteriorating a little bit and moving into a more diverse thought process. A more diverse thought process is dangerous to the cabal because that means that they are not as unified as they once were. So therefore, I believe the cabal per perhaps could fall apart if they are not careful. So I'm leaning toward ascension because I think that mankind needs more enlightenment. Yes. <laughs> However, I do like the fact that control keeps things unified. Uh -huh. and ascension is out of control in some senses. Of course. There is no guidelines for it. Mm -hmm. So 
I, I do think that it needs more guidelines. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> I uh, thank you very much. I have a few minutes left. Um, and thank you very much for sharing and for um, it, it was very helpful. No, I'm glad. Thank you.